All right, so this is sort of an awkward setup right now. Sort of set up my plastic table in front of my aquarium because it has the best lighting in the family room. Um, obviously, they get to watch. What's happening right now is I have been dealing with bloat. I quarantined three fish. One is eating in the quarantine. He's going to go back in the main tank in a little bit. All these guys are eating metro-based food. I already added clout to this main aquarium because I didn't want anything to spread. Um, I know it's an extreme measure, but they are all coughing and showing signs of it, but still eating. So I ran two days of clout in here and then went ahead and fed metro after, you know, a day of cool down from the clout. Um, they all seem to be doing really well. You know, they're all colored up again. You know, the cloud was pretty stressful, so a lot of them colored down, but they're back at it. They always follow me whenever I walk past the tank. Yeah, but two of my fish are not affected by the cloud. And I don't know if the cloud could all the parasites, but they still have backup, you know, constipation. They're still pooping out mucus, the mucus lining from their intestines. So it's the white stringy feces you often see with bloat or an internal parasite. Um, I already lost one tetrastigma to it. He wasn't bloated. He didn't pine cone up or anything. So I think it's just a weird internal parasite that needs to go. I'm not sure if it's hex or spironucleosis, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, so what I got here is a modified three milliliter lure lock syringe with uh, <laughs> the sleeve of a, uh, of a wire. I went ahead, I went to Lowe's and I bought a wire and I just stripped the copper from the inside so it's just this 1 8 inch diameter thing attached to a needle with tape around it. Works fine. What's going to happen is it's going to go down his throat. Um, hopefully the copper didn't, you know, contaminate the plastic. Hopefully the copper content doesn't kill the fish. If it does, that sucks, but they'll probably die anyway if they don't do this. So yeah, uh, I'm doing the fryer eye first because I'm not saying I care about him least, but my OB is also sick, and he's my show fish. He's my prized possession, and I'd cry if he died. So this is going to be really, really nerve-wracking, sticking this thing down my fish's esophagus. So, yeah, I've seen a video of this done before. I don't know what the guy's name was, but he wet down a spot, you know, to keep the fish comfortable while it laid there. Yeah, and uh, say 3% solution, distilled water to magnesium sulfate or Epsom salt. So let's go ahead and draw up a few cc's of that. It's working pretty well. Yeah, it's all dissolved and everything. Um, get the air bubbles water all out so there's only water in the syringe. So I think we're ready to go. Um, ready to shove a uh, tube down my fish's throat. I'm sure not many people have done this. So this is, this is really different. Hopefully I don't kill it. First up is the fryer eye, and he's going to flip out. He's not going to like this at all. Oh boy. Oh, that's on my face. Wait. Alright. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Jeez. This is going to be really interesting. Nice spiny. So, I was told Open up the mouth. Yeah, he doesn't like that at all. Holy shit. So, open up the mouth again. Oh, there it goes. So a few cc's in there. Turn him up so he swallows it. And there we go. Let's put him back in the tank now, see if he's alive. Shit. Alright. So he's alive.
So I'm going to hold off on the OB and see how that guy does. Because I'm not sure if I hit the esophagus or if I hit a gill or something, but it went down pretty far. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'll start the video again and let you guys know what happened. So.